This video gives an overview of our completed Connected and Automated Vehicle Education in a Box Testing and Education Toolkit. By the end of this video, you will understand the differences between our two Cave in a Box options, the components within each box, and how the components are connected. Shown here are our completed Cave in a Box mobile and infrastructure kits. The infrastructure kit is used to support the non-vehicular side of the intelligent transportation system. It supports the wireless communication, application, and cooperative messaging that is needed for connected and automated vehicle systems. The mobile kit is installed within the vehicle and used for testing the communication with infrastructure. These boxes are made to be portable and make testing easier. New applications can easily be bench tested on this device to ensure the system is working before applying the changes to an actual intersection. It is important to note that it does not matter what order the components are put into the box to make the system work, but we will go over the simplest way. This is a plug and play device which allows us to update future components as needed. We will go over the components within the infrastructure box. They include the traffic signal controller, a roadside unit, a Vita X hub computer, a wired network switch with a wireless router, a power supply, and a touch screen with HDMI capability. The components within the mobile kit include an onboard unit, a car power supply, a controller area network bus connector, and an optional touchscreen or a tablet. We will now show you how to construct the two boxes. We will start with the infrastructure kit. The first is the signal controller. We are using a National Transportation Communications for ITS Protocol, or NTCIP, version 1202 compliant signal controller. Most available signal controllers are supported, but we suggest you consult the vendor documentation for details. The signal controller is the actuator for the signal state and phase messages and is connected to a roadside unit via the Vita X Hub computer. The signal controller is held securely in place to the shelf via mechanical screws. Next, we add the roadside unit, or RSU. The roadside unit is a wireless gateway that allows messages to be forwarded between wired network components and wireless broadcasts. This is secured using hook and loop fasteners. Next is Vita X Hub. This is a dedicated computer running a USDOT open source middleware platform called Vita X Hub. It incorporates a software stack that is a messaging service and an encoder and decoder for the latest Society of Automotive Engineers connected vehicle standard messages. This is also secured to the lower shelf with hook and loop fasteners. This is the installed wired network switch. This is required for a network connection within the box. As long as the components inside the box are set up for the same subnet, it is possible to swap components in the future and connect them via Ethernet cable using the same switch. Furthermore, a hook and loop fastener is used to secure this device to the lower shelf. This box can be connected through the network to a Traffic Management Center, or TMC, where it can then be configured and operated from the TMC directly. As you see here, this box has been placed at the Turner Fairbank intersection, where we have connected an Ethernet cable from our TMC network, the Saxton Development Network. Now we will move to the TMC to show how we can control the box from there. Here is the power supply. A standard 110 volt VAC power supply will work for this box. The power supply for this box has an AC wall socket extension that can be used to connect to a wall socket or power outlet along an intersection for outdoor testing. This is a rack mount device and is secured using machine screws to the outer rails of the box. Lastly, here is the touch screen. This is used for accessing the admin portal in the Vita X Hub as well as bringing up the terminal emulator so that the packet sniffing applications can be used. This is also used for debugging and maintenance purposes. Now we will construct the mobile box. First is the onboard unit. The antenna from the onboard unit must be mounted on the roof of the vehicle as close to the center as possible. This will give the best possible broadcasting angle in all directions. Please refer to the OBU video for more information. Next is the controller area network bus. This is an interface endpoint for the CAN bus system. The CAN bus system is an intravehicular network for message exchange between different components of a vehicle. The CAN bus may be accessed using an OBD2 connector or a serial connection, depending on the OBU manufacturer. The CAN bus is connected to the onboard unit. The vehicle uses an automobile auxiliary power outlet to power the mobile kit with 12 volt DC power. Lastly, the optional touchscreen tablet. This tablet is connected through the available wired or wireless interface to the OBU. 
The tablet will log and parse all data received by the onboard unit and visualize the connected vehicle messages. Now that different components of the cave in a box are visible, we will start by configuring these components and then verify that all the messages are being correctly exchanged within the cave in a box configuration and the TMC at Turner Fairbank Highway Research Center. The first step in setup is to configure the traffic signal controller. The traffic signal controller would require initial configurations to ensure the controller is on the same subnet. Once that is done, it would be required to have the SPAT output configured to ensure the SPAT messages are being forwarded to the Vita X Hub. To do this, we will use the configuration screen available on the controller to go to the Ethernet section and begin configuring the values for the IP addresses that the controller will be using. This IP address is something that would show up on the DHCP client pool for the Cradlepoint router. Once we have set up the IP addresses, we will set up a net mask of 24, that is 255.255.255.0, and set the gateway for the traffic signal controller, which would be the IP address of the Cradlepoint router. After setting up the configuration and IP address for the controller itself, the last piece we will configure is the ping server. The ping server is the IP address to which the controller would send the NTCIP SPAT messages. Once we have this IP address configured to that value, we will be able to tell if the controller is configured correctly by seeing if it can reach the Vita X Hub, RSU, or any device that would be ingesting the SPAT messages. If it is configured correctly, you will be able to see the server reachable turn to yes. Now that the controller is configured, the next step is to configure Vita X Hub. As soon as we connect the computer using an Ethernet cable to the network switch, we can get an IP address assigned to the Vita X Hub computer using the DHCP server on the Cradlepoint router. We can find that IP address using the Cradlepoint router's client list. For a quick setup of Vita X Hub, the IP address that was assigned was 192.168.55.68. We will navigate to that IP address while we are connecting by Wi Fi to the Cradlepoint router to enable the configuration of Vita X Hub through the admin portal. To pass through security configurations, we will have to add the SSL certificate to our browser. The SSL certificate from Vita X Hub allows us to ensure that the connection is secure or as a user, we approve of the connection. We will then be able to gain access to the configuration screen. To do this, type https colon double backslash the IP address of Vita X Hub. Then the port number 19760, which is where the SSL certificate is clustered. It will say the connection is not private, but since we know this is not the case, we will proceed anyway to the IP address. The next step is to navigate to the IP address. Once there, the IP address might have to be entered one final time, but eventually the admin portal for Vita X Hub will load and it will prompt you to log in. This screen is a sign that the web page has successfully connected to the WebSocket on Vita X Hub. After this, you will log in. On the Vita X Hub admin portal, we will be looking at two main things the map message and the SPAT plugin. These plugins may be enabled or disabled depending on how they've been set up. In the Messages section, you can see which messages are being received or sent. Once we enable the plugins, you can see the numbers update. The third plugin we will turn on is the DSRC Message Manager, which enables the sending of SPAT and MAP messages to the RSU for broadcasting. Now that these plugins have been configured, you can see the numbers being updated where SPAT is being received. Once it is confirmed that the messages are being received, we will ensure that the messages are being received on the RSU. To do this, we will log into the RSU after configuring it to the right IP address. You can learn more about RSU configuration in the RSU training video. We will be jumping into directly configuring the RSU. We will start by putting in the IP address using the SSH insert IP address. Once you are in, it will ask if you want to continue. Type in yes and then type in the RSU's password. A welcome message will let you know that you are inside the RSU. Then we will access the RSU and run ipconfig to see if the right interfaces are open. Once that is confirmed, run a TCP dump command on the port to check if the messages are coming in. RSU config script has more information on configuring the RSU for logging the data. As you can see, the SPAT and MAP messages are coming from Vita X Hub to the RSU. This means that Vita X Hub has been configured correctly. To only see SPAT data, you may have to use a command like tcpdump interface grep b2a50013. 
To test if the RSU is sending out the messages correctly, we will use the vehicular kit to capture messages broadcasted from the RSU. Let's review what we've learned. First, we talked about the differences between the infrastructure and mobile kits. Next, we talked about the different components within each kit. Then, we discussed how the components are connected and installed within the box. Lastly, we talked about how to configure the components and ensure that they're working properly. By applying the knowledge from this video, you are ready to build your own cave in a box. Follow along with the rest of the video sequence as we discuss other vital system components. Music